morning everybody. I am Dr. Rishwa Sharma. I am a plastic surgeon with microvascular surgery training. I got special interest in brachial plexus injuries, both adult and pediatric brachial plexus injury. In children, they are also known by ob obstetric brachial plexus palsy, OBPI, or they are also known as Urbs palsy. Now, causes of Urbs palsy are varied in myriad cases. Mainly, it occurs in overweight babies and pre-diabetic mothers or diabetic mothers and um, birth canal obstruction is the major cause of these injuries and forced traction injuries. Even in adult in developed countries, they got a fairly constant incidence of 1 is to 1000 births per live births of these injuries. Now these injuries are of various kinds, they can be very small tra traction injury or they can be complete palsy. Now all these injuries uh, have got relatively better prognosis than the adult injuries in a sense that the, the child is growing and the most of the injuries are of low velocity trauma. So since they are of low velocity trauma, so the amount of injury to the ch children is usually less and their growth potential and recovery potential is great. And with proper surgery, physiotherapy and proper management, the limb can be restored to near normal function. Often in cases, child goes on to become a successful career in any branch in which he chooses. So coming down to the types of the injuries, it could be minor just little bit uh, traction injury which recovers within three months or it could be serious injury which is which shows no signs of recovery. In between, there could be uh, patient can have little bit uh, varying patterns of little bit of recovery. So treatment of each patient is individualized in, uh, in each case it has to be individualized based upon his nature of injury and amount of injury the ch children has. Now coming to the basic outline of the management, the, we must understand there are there is a basic outline of the management that in early part in first month and second month mainly what we do is we do physiotherapy of the in order to keep the joint soft and supple and in order to prevent development of contractures and then we watch for the any recovery to occur if there is a signs of recovery we manage the expectant observation and we keep observing that child after the recovery is complete often if recovery occurs it's okay but if by three months three to six months if there is no development of bicep means c5 is injured and there is no development of bicep is not recovering or not showing any signs of recovery and you can observe till six months but by three to six months if child is not developing bicep recovery then he needs urgently need surgery that's a very definitive indication of surgery we usually prefer to do nerve surgery till three to uh, three to nine months. Between three to nine months, any time the surgeon can decide to operate the ch children and to do the neurolysis and nerve transfers. Now, after the nine months, usually um, often this indication of nine months can be extended till two years in some cases, but in case the motor end plates are live, if by any histopathology you come to know that motor end plates, you can still plan to do nerve transfers. But after that, usually there is some amount of recovery and then once the recovery comes, the muscles which are more powerful recover early, they become more powerful and muscles which recover late become less powerful. So patient develops contracture. So there is a co-contracture and contractures are there for which often Botox is needed along with physiotherapy for in order to child, uh, enable the child to achieve a good growth potential and good limb function. After the Botox, once the child reaches 2 to 5 years of age, if the recovery is going at expected phase, it is okay. Often some children who are not operated, who have not undergone nerve surgery and who have not undergone any other Botox also, they started developing shoulder deformity for which they need muscle transfer 
and uh, tendon transfers and releases anterior capsular release various kind of uh, muscle releases and transfers in order to achieve good shoulder function apart from that patient often develops deformities of elbow and wrist and fingers and in thing in hand there are there are deformities of thumb as well as of fingers so the patient often needs in elbow there there could be flexion contractures which needs release and straightening of the elbow and then patient may also develop thumb deformities supination contracture pronation contractures for that you, they need various specified procedures and in hand and thumb often they need tenodesis procedures or tendon transfers in order to achieve good hand function uh, these are the various procedures and they all continue uh, all these procedures are, are often accompanied by intensive sessions of physiotherapy and all this management often results in in especially in children very gratifying results and in herbs palsy especially it gives reasonably good function what is basically a practically a useless limb is converted into a useful limb and child often gets a peer acceptance and he is well integrated into society he becomes a productive man individual member of the productive member of the society so that way management of herbs palsy and all these cases is very important and often in a tra well trained hand a child can get a good hand function and a good life thank you